a leading expert studying the Yellowstone volcanoes reports from the University of Utah, New Mexico University, and the Institute of Earth Sciences in Taiwan in 2020 deployed 650 temporary seismometers in Yellowstone to measure seismic wave speeds in the subsurface of the caldera's magma chamber. The massive deployment resulted in the best picture of the magma chamber ever seen and has led to interesting findings. Important though rarely discussed around workplace water coolers, outside of those intended for scientists, the deployment provided a view at how magma waves behave. Specifically, if horizontally oriented waves of magma are faster or slower than vertically oriented ones. It helps us better understand what the magma chamber actually looks like. It's not a blob of partially molten material that is even throughout. Rather, it is almost stratified, with some partially molten sills towards the top said Mike Poland, scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, adding, it's amazing that we are starting to achieve this level of resolution. The research is important and could be used to better help save lives in the future as scientists work to understand geophysical structure and improve forecasts of eruptions and earthquakes. The current seismic network in Yellowstone maintained by the University of Utah Seismograph Stations consists of about 40 stations. The research also found that the percentage of semi-liquid or melt material in Yellowstone's magma chamber is possibly higher than previously thought, suggesting it could be as high as 28%. It is the observation about the percentage of melt that has sparked concern by some outside the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory that the volcanoes might be closer to an eruption than previously thought. But before you start prepping for the end of the world as we know it, the consensus is there are many thousands of years left before the supervolcanoes will erupt again. The increased amount of melt means an eruption is much closer than previously thought. Jamie Farrell, who is part of the research team and University of Utah seismologist, is that while there is believed to be a higher percentage of melt than previously thought, that doesn't mean the amount is increasing. Even though the percent is larger, it doesn't mean there is more or less now, Farrell said. The experts presented the study in the scientific journal Earth and Planetary Science Letter and wrote that despite the fact that the melt percentage is higher than previous estimates, it is still much lower than required to erupt. Farrell said a melt percentage of 50% is needed for the magnet to become mobile. Such improvement of understanding Yellowstone's system has guided us in a promising direction to studying other volcanic systems on Earth. For instance, applying the same method at other volcanoes could provide important insights into how magma is stored in hazardous and frequently active systems.